And our CBS 21 political insiders join us now. Kevin Harley is in for Charlie Giroux. Thanks for being with us. You bet. So this, of course, is Tony May, our Democratic strategist. The bond rating service Moody's has downgraded Pennsylvania's bond rating from AA2 to AA3 because the state has failed to deal effectively with the pension fund, which we've talked about so much. Um, Kevin, let's start with you on this. Uh, what is the short-term and the long-term impact here with this? Well, well, basically, this is similar to a, a, a personal credit rating. It mm -hmm. goes down, which makes borrowing a little more difficult. Maybe you can't borrow as much, and people may not want to invest as much in Pennsylvania. But this really goes to the heart of what Governor Corbett's been saying about the pension crisis, is that inaction by the Pennsylvania legislature has consequences. It's the downgrading of our bond rating. And that's why he's pushing so hard for pension right. reform. And, uh, you know, sec uh, former Secretary uh, of Revenue Tom Wolf, the Democratic nominee for governor, says there's not a problem. Well, certainly today, you can see by the bond rating that the markets think that there is a problem unless we do something about this pension crisis. Tony, will this uh, sway any of the Democrats? Oh, I think it, it will. I mean, the problem is not, there is an issue with the pensions. We don't, we don't have enough money to pay all the people who are in the system mm -hmm. and it will only be solved by putting more money into the system cutting benefits for future uh, state employees won't do anything with the current problem so I salute the governor for pushing for a special session or, or action on pension reform what where I part company is does he go far enough and I say no I think we have to put more money into pensions now Okay, I know you guys could go on and on about pension <laughs> reform. I could too, but let's get on to immigration. Mm -hmm. It's been announced that a church-related organization in Mechanicsburg uh, is a children's home there. It's going to be housing undocumented immigrant children from Central America. As you know about this problem, 50,000 kids have come into the U.S. just this year alone. Um, Tony, what impact is that going to have on the residents here? Well, I, you're going to see some children w from uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador in the schools in, in the Mechanicsburg area because mm -hmm. that's the way the children's home there has operated. And they've operated that way with problem children from America with, without really unseemly problems. I don't see anything changing drastically. Kevin, you know, the governor has expressed concern and a lot of other people have about proper immunization, things right. like that uh, right. on, of these kids if they're going to be mixing in with kids right. from here. Um, is there anything the Republicans might push on the state level? We know they're working on this in Washington. Sure. But do you feel that our state politicians could do anything well, about it? Well, you know, the first, first, Rob, I think it's a, a demonstration of the failure of the Obama administration. He hasn't even reached out to the governors in these 50 states. He hasn't reached out to Governor Corbett. So the states, the question is, are we going to be asked to bear the cost of this? You know, the, the governor raised an issue of immunization. Well. There's health concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, is the federal government going to do this? Is the state supposed to do this? Uh, school districts? Who, who's going to be responsible? We're looking for leadership out of President Obama in Washington, and so far we haven't found it. Well, it's our understanding that this organization, along with the others, is going to get federal money to help you know, take care of these kids. So, Tony, in a sense, everybody pays. Well, everybody's going to pay. <clears throat> and I think Central Pennsylvania has a good record. Back when the Cuban boat people were coming to the United States, we stepped up, housed some at Indian Town Gap. Later, with it, when the Vietnamese War came to an end, we housed Vietnamese refugees there. Uh, the communities opened their arms and made a home for people. I think we can handle uh, 50 or 100 or 200 uh, children refugees. All right, Tony May, thanks. And Kevin Harley in for Charlie Giroux. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And uh, you can always catch our Political Insiders every Tuesday right here on CBS 21 News at 5.30 and again on Sunday mornings on Face the State. Coverage begins at 11.30 after Face the Nation right here on CBS 21.